Good morning, good morning. My name is Angela. Welcome to my channel. Today I will be lifting up God's great name and just going over a lesson that God placed on my heart this morning. And it's the story of Moses. And Moses went through a lot just finding himself. And you know, this is also part two to this identity series that I started just last week. And I think it's something God is trying to show us in this season right now. I'm constantly finding out who I am in Christ Jesus, that we have power and authority in Jesus mighty name. Before I get too much into this message, I just want to invite God's Holy Spirit to take over this moment, to take over this lesson because he gave me this lesson. He gives me this word and he just brings clarity to my mind. And I know that I can do nothing without him. So I'm going to invite his Holy Spirit here right now to take over and do what only he can through this willing vessel. Let's bow our heads and invite him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for living in every believer's heart, God. I just take in that, that truth right there. For what it is, God, you have made your home in our hearts, Lord, and you have called us all for a unique purpose to be exercised in this earth, Father. Hallelujah. I pray that this Bible study will allow your children, will allow me to rise to the occasion, Father, as the children of God that we are, Lord, that the veils would be torn off, God, that we would Begin to walk in the power and authority, Father, that you have put in every believer, God. Yes, Lord. I just thank you for this message, God. I thank you for where you're going to take it, Lord, because I know I can do nothing without you, Father. But I just come in faithfulness, Lord, knowing that you are going to speak through me, God, that you are going to teach me as well as every ch child that is tuning in right now by faith, God. We need a word from you every single day, Lord. The last thing I want to do is follow my own flesh, God. I need to hear from your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You are my guidance, Father. You are my all in all, Father. And I just put all my faith and trust in you right now. And I consider it done in advance, Father. Thank you for this word, Father. I believe it's going to break chains in someone's life, God. I believe someone's going to begin to get their hope back in the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That you are going to show us our purpose, God. I know that you have put unique talents and abilities in each believer, God. Even those that don't yet believe you, God, the, the gifts have already been given. Hallelujah. And I just thank you. I'm believing right now you're going to start waking these gifts up inside of us, Father. They will no longer be dormant. Hallelujah. But something's going to be awakened today in Jesus' mighty name. And we receive it right now by faith. Have your way, God, right now. We put a demand on your power, God. Hallelujah. We're hungry and thirsty for your word, God. We come with a humble and contented mind. In Jesus' name, right now. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. I'm ready for God to do his thing right now. I just got these notes together, so just bear with me. We are going to do this right now. So we're talking about Moses and part of this identity series, I'm just going to focus today on we are chosen of God. We were chosen from the beginning of the world. That's a deep scripture to really take into your heart. Before I ever was, I was chosen. God put my the gifts in me when he was knitting me together in my mother's womb. God loves us so much. And he made us all different. We are not to be the same as our neighbor, as our child. Hallelujah. Alrighty, so we're chosen and God has put a purpose in us. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. But, you know, wherever God wants to take it, I welcome him to take it there. Because he knows best, not me. I'm the vessel. He's the one in the driver's seat. <laughs> Alright, 
So I want to start with a scripture. I got Bibles on each side because I'm trying to be ready and I'm trying not to be talking all day because I get carried away when I talk about the Lord. Oop, I hit my stand. Okay, so Ephesians 1 and 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Wow. He chose us. He chose you. He chose me. That makes me feel very accepted. He's not looking at me for my flaws. He chose me. And God has not given up on his purposes that he put in me. <laughs> I know at one point in my life, people could have looked at me like I was a lost cause. But God always seen his purpose that he put in me. And he never gives up on his child. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that God was patient with me over the years. I can be very hard-headed. Oh, but God, <laughs> he's bigger than my hard-headedness. Praise God. And he's very patient. His loving kindness just brings me to my knees. Hallelujah. Okay. So we are a chosen people. That is the scripture I wanted to start with. So now we're going to talk about Moses. Moses has an incredible story. So he was born as a slave. Moses' mother, <laughs> what an awesome woman, she put him in the river in a basket and she sent him down the river by faith that her son would live. And she knew that Pharaoh's daughter bathed in that same river so she just had total faith that she would find Moses and she did and she started claiming him as her own child and he grew up in royalty so that was like a huge thing right there he went from being a slave baby in danger of being killed to in the palace of the very person that was given the order to kill like wow <laughs> that's a lot to take in I'm trying to go quickly over the story. So then when Moses grows up, I'm not sure how old he was, but you know, he's royalty. He finds out, he hears a rumor that he was a slave and he tries to get to the bottom of it. And he starts feeling torn between the palace and slavery. Like he had identity issues. And this one day he's seen, um, uh, Egyptian beating up a slave and he was troubled in his heart and Moses ended up killing the Egyptian and then he fled he took off he, he left his family everybody because it was the law that he would be killed so he ran away from that penalty and everything else that he knew and he went into Midian and he ends up marrying that he had left his past behind and he started a new new life away from all of his past all the confusion everything he didn't understand and after 40 years God began to speak to him through a burning bush that was not consumed Whew. God is so amazing he will stop you right in your tracks and show you something you have never seen before. And you will know that is God. So after the 40 years in Midian and God speaking to him, he goes back to Egypt to talk to Pharaoh and to tell him to let God's people go, which is a huge demand. It's like, Moses, <laughs> you've been gone for 40 years. Who are you to think you can come back? And, you know, God was with him. And that is when all the plagues began, you know. Pharaoh ended up letting God's people go because God was not letting go. And God is over everything. So he let his people go, and then that's when they came to the Red Sea. They were fleeing Egypt, and then Pharaoh began to come after them. Moses ends up parting the Red Sea with the staff and the rod, the rod that God told him to use. And he parted that Red Sea by faith and led all the Israelites through it. And the Egyptians tried to follow them and they got consumed in the waters, taken away. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. It took a lot for Moses to get to that point. 
to lead anybody because before he ran off from Egypt to Midian, he could barely deal with the feelings going on in himself. I know I've been there where I didn't know my next step. Sometimes I'll feel like I'm doing everything right and then in an instant, it feels like everything gets messed up and I'm doing stuff wrong. And you know, I thank God for those moments because you know, it's so easily easy to get off track and on your own purposes and on your own will. And God allows everything to be right back, put right back into perspective. Because if I submit to my thoughts and my plans, you know, I've already done that before and it takes me in the wrong direction and it just causes more pain. And I'm learning to just submit every thought to God, allow him to filter everything. Bring him the things I'm confused about. There should be no shame. If you're confused about something, bring it to God. He will bring clarity. And it's not always instant. Sometimes we got to wait on him. And that can be the hardest thing is to wait on God. Because then you start questioning, do you hear me? You know, that's when doubts start to try to move their way into your life. But that's our biggest time to just keep our faith. Giving it to God and waiting on him to deliver us from that wrong mindset, to make the situation calm down and just bring us into our right mind. Cause you know, I make bad decisions when I'm in my feelings. I think we can all relate to that. Feelings are there and they're real. And sometimes I gotta cast them down and be like, no feelings, you're not gonna, you're not gonna lead my day. You're not gonna steal my peace. God's word says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. That's something, you know, we got accustomed to. We, we grew up leaning on our own understanding unless we were told otherwise. So now I'm learning to take off my own understanding and ask, invite God into the situation. How should I be looking at this Lord? Am I looking at it totally wrong? And sometimes I am, you know? It's something we have to stay in relationship with God about. Otherwise, we will get weary. We will not know which way to turn, which way to go, when to keep our mouth shut and when to open it. You know, like I have to ask him all these things because in a moment I could make a wrong decision and pop off because of my feelings. My feelings are fickle. <laughs> so I don't want to get off subject, but hallelujah for that, Lord. So. We're, with everything I told you about Moses, his story, I'm just going to go back over it with key points where I know God allows us to grow in painful situations. I think we've all faced painful situations, our little desert moments where we're like, okay, where do we go from here? And a few, maybe a month or two ago, I had someone request where, um, where to go when you're redefining your life in Christ, in God's word. We're constantly redefining ourselves. People try to put labels on you, but you have to just submit yourself to God because can't nobody speak over you but God himself, hallelujah. He has a plan for your life. He has purposes for your life that no man can touch. No man can close a door on what God has in store for you. God will open that door at the right time. He will preserve that door that nobody can open it but you. But we got to follow him. We have to seek him. Hallelujah. We got to wait on the Lord. And we must believe. We have to have faith that he is working even when we can't see it and when we cannot feel it. Praise God. I can only speak to this because God has delivered me so much and still is. I'm always in a process. We are going to be in process till God comes back to get us. Hallelujah. So the first part that I want to go over is being set apart. And I am going to read this out of Deuteronomy 14 and 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord the God, thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Hallelujah. 
we are set apart. And you know, I had many moments growing up where I just felt different. <laughs> and you know, maybe an outcast. That's because the life I thought I wanted and was trying to live, that was not my destiny that God set up for me. So you know, I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where people get away with so much, but then when you try to do something, you know, you get caught. That was not my life. <laughs> I was uh, chasing after the wrong things, and I'm just so glad that God was my keeper. Moses, he was already set apart from birth. He just didn't know who he was. And when he found out he may be a slave, the very people that his people, his family were keeping enslaved, he was torn within himself. Just knowing that that could be his family. It just had him looking at a whole nother mind through a whole nother mindset, what they're doing to these other people. And it could have very well been him. So after he kills the Egyptian, he runs off to Midian for 40 years. And that is his set apart stage. And when he was living in Midian, he took him a wife. His job when he was in Midian, which I find to be fascinating, was a shepherd. Who else was a shepherd in scripture? David. God will allow you to be prepared in obscurity when you are in the background, when you feel like nobody's watching your day to days. I know sometimes people are in a job where they're like, you know, I don't know where this is going, Lord. I'm just trying to make it paycheck to paycheck. But God is building something in those moments. Moses could have never known that he would be leading God's people. 40 years from now, he was just tending the shepherd. Let me, uh, no, he was the shepherd tending the flock, the sheep. So let me just go over briefly what a shepherd is and what they do. Okay. The shepherd's job is the safety and welfare of the flock. Some flocks may include up to a thousand sheep. So God was preparing him with these many sheep, keeping them safe and out of harm's way preparing him to go into the next stage of his life where he would keep the Israelites safe and lead them, hallelujah, just as they were the sheep. He, he allowed him to become oh so familiar. Now he's not leading sheep. He's leading God's people, hallelujah. And he led them out of their captivity and he led them through the waters by faith. And that faith had to be builded. It was builded away from his comfortability, which was in Egypt, being royalty. God pulled him out of his comfortability. He pulled him out of everything he knew to be true. And he rebuilded him, set apart from everything he knew. So don't get discouraged while God is rebuilding you. I know you may feel like you have lost friends and you don't go out very often anymore, but God is building something in you that could not be builded in that last season. You have been removed from it for a reason. Hallelujah. I have went through that many times in my life and God has prepared me for the next season. And that is, leading me to my second point, trusting God's process. Wow. It's rough to trust God's process when you don't know what he's doing. That's when you got to lean in and trust on God's character. He is good. Hallelujah. He's always good. He's the only good thing in this world. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whomever believed on him, would not perish but have everlasting life. That is something you can look at for his character right there. How much he loves you. How much he loves you and how far he would go to bring you back to himself. Hallelujah. That anybody that believed on his name could come into relationship with him. We don't need any money. We don't need to be in a certain place. God has made it so all can come to him. It's beautiful. I just love him love him so much and I just thank you for the process God I thank you for the process even when we don't know the process show us how to trust on your name Lord and to stop trusting on ourselves 
that can be the biggest pressure when we just are trusting on ourselves to have all the answers. We need to trust on God. The same God that got us to this point, right here, right now. Hallelujah. I was talking to someone at my job earlier this week how I was born with a umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. I came out and my mom said my face was purple. The enemy, I think, was trying to take me out before I even came in. But I was helpless, right? I was an innocent little baby. I couldn't fight, but God was fighting that battle for me. I got out just in the nick of time and I am right here lifting up God's name because he is good and I know that he carried me all the way to this point. And God did not get me to this point to leave me now. So just trusting God in the process when you don't know the plan. That's a rough one. And that's something we have to submit to, you know? Some people will pressure you to have all the answers and we just gotta just exhale like, I don't have the answer. <laughs> but I trust the man that has all answers, hallelujah. He is above my thoughts and my ways. He is constantly working out things for our good. So the third thing I want to go over is, I partly did already, God will set you apart and begin the process. And the third one is preparing you for the assignment. Hallelujah. And I want to go over a scripture that has changed my life. It is Jeremiah 29, 12. You always hear, I always quote the scripture right before that. I'll go over it right now. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I talk about that scripture all the time. But this is the scripture that comes after it. And this scripture has changed my life. And brought clarity to things God has delivered me from. And things that he is calling me into. So just listen, and it is Jeremiah 29 and 12. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found of you. Wow, what a promise from God. He's saying if you seek me, you will find me. Seek me with your heart. And a lot of times, we don't really seek God until we are just broken and we're desperate. You know, at least I can speak for myself. I've had many desperation times where I just called out and surrendered. I didn't know what was best for me and I gave it to God. And some of those moments had been an instant relief and others I had to wait I had to allow the process to play out. I'm going to continue to read this. I just wanted to really highlight that point right there. Hallelujah. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. So the place you were held captive, he's going to bring you back. I will gather you. from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the places where I carried you to exile. Now, when I read that, you got to go with what God is speaking to you in your spirit, because he gives you revelation. You could read a scripture today, and it will just unlock something in you. And then you could read it two years or even a month from now, and it will unlock something different. This is a living word, and it has power to change your mind, your perspective, the way you love people. When I hear this scripture, it reminds me that I used to be in a place I didn't understand, and God delivered me from there. He delivered me out of it. And now he has prepared me, hallelujah, he prepared me in the background. He prepared me in uh, my desolate places, my deserts, when I didn't know what was going on. He prepared me to go back and to set even more captives free. I always say, there is no redemption like that. Hallelujah. Well, actually, the greatest redemption was Jesus. <laughs> 
coming after us because we were lost and he set us free. We just got to accept that freedom and live in it as the ch as his ch children, as God's children. We got to live in what was already done on that cross. Hallelujah. We are free in the name of Jesus. So we have to accept it and believe it. If you still believe you're bound, you're going to feel bound. We have to believe we are free by the blood of Jesus. He did not die in vain. Hallelujah. So I believe I went through some hard things so I could go back and encourage other people that are still in those hard things. Some people might have went through an addiction and God has brought you out of that addiction. And I believe God is going to call you back to those same people that you can relate to, that you can speak to. And he is going to allow you to set them free. Just as he set you free, he is going to bring you back to that same captivity. And you are going to be prepared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you didn't know what was going on, God was preparing you to go into your calling, to go into what he has destined for your life, your gifting. And when you are exercising God's will and what he put in you is activated, there is no feeling like that. I just, after I released these videos and hallelujah, after I release these videos, I get a sudden burst of joy. It it, it's, it doesn't feel like that as I'm leading up to do the thing. Because, you know, there's going to be spiritual warfare. The enemy tries to stop me through my feelings from delivering God's message and doing his will. And it's going to be that way. That's the opposition that comes to stop you. But if you... Face those fears and you do it anyway, regardless of how you feel, God will give you the victory. Hallelujah. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. We have to walk by faith and not by feelings. And I just thank you, God, for giving us this word. Hallelujah. So that's exactly what God did for Moses. The place he ran off from, he prepared him. By being a shepherd, 40 years right there in that desert wilderness. And then when it was God's timing, he spoke to him through a burning bush. Something Moses has never seen before. Something if he told somebody about, they would think he was crazy. But he knew he wasn't crazy. Hallelujah. God will allow you to see things so that you know that he is God Almighty. And if he says he is with you... Moses tried to talk God out of giving him this assignment. He was like, oh, I'm not a good speaker. I stutter. God knows who he's calling. Do not turn down. God has put gifts in us. He knows who he is called. And if Moses did speak well, he would think that, you know, he might get on his little high horse. But since Moses knows he's not a good speaker, it allowed him to go into the situation humbly, relying on God to do what he felt he was incapable of. God will qualify you. Hallelujah. No matter what your past is, he will use it to set other captives free. And that's exactly what he did through Moses. And Moses is one of those people you hear talked about often in the Bible. And he faced his fears. He went back to Egypt knowing what he had ran away from and faced his fears and did what God willed him to do was to get his, his captives, hallelujah, his Israelites free. And he did that. Praise God. I pray this message was a blessing for you. If it was, you know, leave a comment. And if not, I understand if you don't want to leave a comment, you know. Right now is the point where I want to just invite anybody that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior to come to them. You can receive Jesus Christ right now. You can receive him anywhere. And I just want to invite you this opportunity. Every video, I always give someone an opportunity to come to Christ. Jesus saved my life. He saved me from myself. 
I had really bad mindsets and he's continuing to deliver me every single day that I allow him to, that I just really give myself to him. Because we could give ourselves to so many things. I know you know, because we have so many to-do lists, you know. I had to just stop right now and do this Bible study because I know me. I may get distracted and I miss my opportunity. We just have to continue to submit ourselves and get what we know we need. And right now, I believe somebody is feeling the pulling and the tugging on their heart to come to know Jesus. Or maybe even just to learn a little bit more about Jesus. Let's do it right now. Lord Jesus, thank you for this moment. Hallelujah. I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life, Lord. Sometimes it feels like the walls are just crashing in on me. I heard you are the savior, Jesus. So I'm coming to you right now by faith, asking you to set me free from myself. Today, I put my faith in you, Jesus Christ, to save me from my sins. I invite you right now to come live in my heart, to clean my mind and my heart of everything that's not working. Help me, Holy Spirit, to recognize you for who you are. Today I put my belief, my mustard seed of faith that you said can be so small. I put that mustard seed of faith in you right now. And I wait on you, Holy Spirit, to do what only you can in my heart. Hallelujah. So by faith, I receive you, Christ, right now to myself to change me, that I will never be the same again. In the mighty name of the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I know what God has done for me. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior when I was about 10 or 12. I'm not sure the exact age. It was at a Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames production. And they still go from church to church all year long, saving lives. And that production is priceless to me because that's when I know that I received Christ. When I made the decision within myself that this is not something my mother can pray me into. This is something I have to accept for myself. So I know what a mustard seed of faith can do. I was a young child, but I received Jesus Christ. I knew very little, but I knew, I knew if he was the savior, I wanted to know him. And just to see what he does in my life now and how he has brought me through every rough time in my life. He has preserved me when nothing else in this world could. And he will do the same for you. Continue to seek God. Read his word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Abraham Lincoln taught himself to read, reading the Bible. The Bible is like no other book in this world. And God will meet you on each and every page. Just pray before you read the Bible. And just ask him for wisdom and understanding. It will come and it will change your life. Thank you for tuning in today. And if it is on your heart to share this with a friend, do it. <laughs> Have a blessed day and I just thank you.